What's up fam? I just wanted to talk with y'all a little bit today about a situation that happened to me. And it kind of blew me a little bit, but in a way, I guess that's the price you pay when you speak the truth. I knew years ago when I came into the understanding of who we were as Hebrews that it was going to be something extremely controversial. Um, and over the years, I have found that it takes a lot of it takes a lot of boldness, it takes a lot of guts to speak the truth because um, people don't people don't like the truth. Uh, people want to run from the truth. But in any case, I made this post on Facebook, and um, my comment, or really my description to that post talked about how the scripture said that we are called to be as Bereans and yet because of mind control tactics a lot of us have um, not researched the scripture to see what it has to say for what it has to say versus what our pastor said it has to say versus what the media or the Christian media has to say movies uh, literature all of those things what does the Bible say about the Bible so I also included two verses, one from the Old Testament and from the New Testament, referring to Yahusha and how he would be called out of Egypt by Father Yah, as well as how the angel told Joseph to take Mary and the young child to Egypt. So um, in posting this, I said that the, the truth only sounds racist to those who are afraid of the truth. I got a couple of likes on the post and I got a couple of comments, but... Then I got a comment from my former pastor. Now my former pastor is not, this particular pastor is not a white man, but rather he is uh, from Guyana um, and may very well be a Hebrew himself, I don't know. But he said that to say that Jews are black is racist. And then he unfriended me. He blocked me and unfriended me before I got a chance to really dialogue with him. So when I saw that he had unfriended me because I said that the ancient Israelites were black and yet the modern Jews are white and how could this be and he labeled that as racist you know it it was something that I kind of expected um, to get some backlash on but not to be unfriended by him uh, but in any case that's the price that you pay that's the price that you pay sometimes when you have people in your life who you think um, that you have a really close-knit relationship with or you have some shared history and you think that because you have that history with them that that means that they have your corner they they're, they're gonna hear you out they're gonna listen to you but many of us have found that the people that are so-called closest to us are the quickest people to, um, to to brush us off or to call us racist or to call us um, anti-semitic or, or what have you because we're exposing the truth of the Bible. Um, I've said it before many times that this is, I am not a Hebrew Israelite uh, involved in any camps. Uh, I am a born again Hebrew Christian. Uh, I love my brethren, whether they're Hebrew or Gentile. Uh, I love you no matter what ethnicity that you are. And before I knew that Jesus was a Negro, uh, I loved him. When I thought he was an Ashkenazi Jew, I loved him. If I thought he was an Asian, I would have loved him. The, the point is, is that he died for my sins so that I would have an opportunity to be able to <laughs> repent and uh, receive everlasting life. That's, that's the reason why I got saved. It wasn't because of his ethnicity. But the reality is the reality. And I grew up very much in churches um, in my Christian walk since I've been born again that have really pushed the pro state of Israel message and God blesses those who bless Israel and curses those who curse Israel but I have a question for those of you in particular who are listening to this uh, this this message I have a couple of questions for you concerning uh, the people who are in the state of Israel and how they line up scripturally uh, for one the state of Israel their state religion is atheism they do not hold to any uh, religion even though they say that uh, they are Jewish so that they follow the, the religion of Judaism, but actually the state defined religion is atheism Secondly, they hold the largest homosexual um, LGBT pride parade in the world um, How does this line up with being God's chosen people? I'm, I'm really trying to understand how this would line up when 
the Most High Yah declared that homosexuality was an abomination to him in his word. Uh, that, that, the, that the Apostle Paul said that men would change the natural use of the woman to lust after one another. That women would also do the same. The third question is, how is it that the Ashkenazi Jewish people have the highest rate, second only to Australia, of skin cancer in the world if they are indigenous to that land? These are questions that we have to ask ourselves, not because we're trying to be bigoted or because we're trying to be racist, but rather because we're trying to actually go in and seek the truth of the Most High Yah's word. We are called to be Bereans. That means that we don't just take what somebody says to us and just say, yeah, I believe that. We actually go and research for ourselves to see what somebody says, see if it's true. And um, a lot of times people don't like that. In particular with me, a lot of people don't like that with me because those who have uh, interacted with me face to face know that I'm a jolly person, know that I am uh, the life of the party, if you will. I'm a very type A personality. Um, and uh, overall, you know, I just have a friendly demeanor. Um, and that side of me, they love. But the side of me that talks about the truth for what it really is, and the side of me that says I'm not going to believe the propaganda, uh, I'm going to be a Berean, I, I'm, I, I gave my life to Yahusha, not to the church. Um, I gave my life to him because he died for me, the church didn't die for me. Uh, I love the church, uh, but nevertheless, that part of me, a lot of times people don't want to accept. Uh, it doesn't fit into the paradigm of the, uh, of the persona in which they have built in their mind uh, concerning me. And you might have found that as well. You might have found that people are accepting of you as long as you're not speaking about something that they deem as controversial, something that they deem as um, uh, heretical or anti-Semitic. Well, I'm going to break that term down real quick, what anti-Semite means. Anti means that you're opposed to someone or something. And the term Semite comes from Noah's third son, Shem. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Um, Ham, according to the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, was a progenitor of the dark races, that being the Egyptians, Libyans, Cushites, but specifically the Zondervan Bible Dictionary says that he did not father the Negroes. Now those who study scripture understand that Japheth migrated into Europe, uh, into Eastern Europe, into the Turk, into the Turk Mountains or the Caucasus Mountains, and that's where we get the word Caucasian from. Um, their migration patterns uh, have put them in that area. Those people are what we would call your modern day white people. Um, and of course Shem, he's the only one that's left. Well if Ham is not the father of the Negroes and Japheth is the father of the Gentiles or the white people, then who fathered the Negroes? I mean it's just really basic logic. This is easy mathematics that we just really have to um, not even really be critical thinkers but we have to more so be non-biased thinkers. We have to lay our biases aside and be willing to see the truth for what it is. So uh, to those of you who have been blocked or unfriended by people who you thought were in your corner, those of you who have been shut down by those who still don't want to believe who we are, I, I say to you guys, I understand how you feel because it is disheartening, it's frustrating when uh, when, when, when the Ruach shows you, when he shows you scripture, when he shows you things that you had never seen before, and then you try to share, much like those who became born again, and they try to share the gospel. And then the people they try to share the gospel with that they used to smoke weed with and go to the club with and hang out with, those same people don't want nothing to do with them once they find quote-unquote religion. So um, this is unfortunately a reality of those who have decided to walk in the truth and this is one of the reasons why I believe that song was written that um, that uh, no turning back uh, though none go with me I still will follow uh, the cross before me the world behind me uh, that there is no turning back and I think that we just have to make that a mindset for us um, and I apologize for that loud noise that you hear in the background I hope that y'all can hear this clearly but we have to determine in our minds that regardless that there's no turning back um, we pray for those who whose eyes are not yet uh, awakened or open 
um, we pray that 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 that, that Yahusha would bathe us in hu in humility, that we would not be full of pride, that we would not um, be puffed up because we are discovering who we are. That's one of the biggest mistakes and traps that those of us who are coming into the understanding of who we are as Israelites, th that was one of the biggest traps and mistakes that we can make is to get bitter or to get prideful. Don't be bitter towards white people. That is the worst thing that you can do because when you do that, you just automatically shut down the voice of the Ruach to be able to speak truth to you because of bitterness. Um, everything that happened to us, quite frankly and scripturally, he allowed. And he only allowed it because of our sin. Period. Period. I mean, read Isaiah. Read Jeremiah. He tells us, you know, I'm allow you to be scattered. I'm going to allow you to lose your land. I'm going to allow you to be enslaved because of your sins, because you've turned from me. So being bitter towards the people group that he chose to use, whether, you know, it was Egyptian or Babylonian or American or whoever um, that he chose to use does not, uh, the, the, put it like this. Scripture says that the wrath of man does not accomplish the righteousness of the Most High Yah. So we got to learn how to check ourselves with that bitterness and that pride. Um, we have to learn to check that too, because pride comes before the fall. Um, this is not about the color of our skin. This is about the fulfillment of prophecy. This is about um, the Most High Yah doing what he said he's going to do. He said all his words will be fulfilled. Every last one of his words will be fulfilled. So we got to keep our eyes on him. And if we can keep our eyes on him and keep our eyes out of hatred, um, it's about the rain. But if we can keep our eyes on him and out of hatred, and we can learn to love our enemies. Yes, I said it. Love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. If you can pray for those who are in disagreement with you um, and, and, and not hold any bitterness toward them in time. The Most High Yah will open up their eyes. And even if they still choose to have their eyes remain shut, um, that's between him and them. That's between him and them. Don't, don't you... Allow yourself to become embittered because of that. I pray for my uh, for my former pastor. I know he's going through a very intense time in his life, um, and uh, I just pray that um, that the Most High will open up his eyes and that he will understand, um, and that those of who have opposed you would understand that you know if those of you who are walking the truth that it's not about a racist thing. It's about a true thing. Um, I'm not racist. Uh, period. And I don't really have to go in to try to prove that I'm not. I know what's in my heart. And at the end of the day, the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things, but that's why I need the blood of Jesus. That's why the blood of Yahusha is what has cleansed and cleanses us from all filth and unrighteousness. So, um, in any case, I just want to come to y'all. Don't need, don't mean to be long with it, but I just want to come to y'all with this and uh, share. So, anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Have you been accused of being racist or anti-Semitic or heretical for believing uh, the truth about yourself? The truth about the Most High Yah's people, even if you are Caucasian, because a lot of Caucasians are coming to the understanding of who we are as well. Have you been looked at as crazy or uh, 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 N I G G E R lover <laughs> if you say the truth of who uh, the children of the Most High are? Um, let me know in the comment section below what you think. And as always, you know, I ask y'all to like and share these posts, but I also ask you to love yourself without hating your enemies. And until next time, y'all bless and shalom.